All right, so I'm gonna show how to replace the hard drive with an SSD on this 21.5 inch iMac late 2012 model A1418. So let me see if I can mount my camera in a way that you guys can see this. Put this on this box here. Let's see, okay. Let's see now. There we go. Okay. So first what you're gonna want is like a little tool like this. Um, you can also use a thin um, pry tool, anything that you can use to kind of cut the adhesive. Um, but anyways, let me show you. Hold on, let me get this other stuff open that I'm gonna need. So when you do this repair, you're going to want some replacement adhesive strips. So just like this, okay, you'll want some adhesive strips and of course the SSD. All right, so to open this thing up, what you want to do is you get the tool and you just get it between the screen and the bezel or the metal part and just roll it across. So it helps to kind of like um, tilt it so that you're pushing the wheel instead of like pulling away from the wheel. Otherwise the wheel can just pop out of the tool. Um, but just go around. Hopefully you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. Just, oh, what in the world? Did his glass crack just from that? That is crazy. So I don't know how, but his glass just cracked right there. So yeah, that's crazy. I might have to get him a new glass and this is gonna cost me more than the cost of the repair itself. So, but anyways, um, just run the tool across like this. All right. And I don't know how that cracked, but for some reason the sides here are like really stuck. So that's really weird. I'm going to go really slow here. Try not to go too fast. I'm going to have to see what he wants to do because that's crazy. I've never seen one that cracked like that before. All right. Especially since this tool doesn't even, it's not even that thick. So it's pretty crazy. All right. I'm wondering if somebody worked on this before and changed something on it because the adhesive here doesn't feel the same as usual. All right, so there we go. Once you cut all the adhesive, you wanna be careful because the screen or the glass will fall forward. If it's not cut all the way, um, you basically, I'm getting my fingers in between and pulling the glass forward. Um, but if it didn't cut all the way, you can run the tool along and kind of help cut it a bit more, okay? So what you're gonna to wanna to do, you have to be careful now. Let me turn on the flash and then show you in the top, okay? So you want to be careful. I use my legs to kind of catch the screen. Okay, just like this. And then you can see inside, all right, here. So what you do is there's this little edge here. You can kind of grab that. So these clips, you kind of have to squeeze it inwards to unhook it. So I use my fingernail and kind of push on it as I kind of pull. So here you see it comes out. And then same thing with the bottom one, kind of push up on it as you kind of pull. All right, just like this. It's kind of difficult to do this at this weird angle, but hopefully you get the idea. There we go, just like that. Here you can see the clips that you kind of have to squeeze it inwards to be able to release them. All right, then you got this connector here. So to remove that, you pull this metal latch out, okay? Just like that, okay? So this metal latch goes like that, and then once you do that, you can actually pull the connector out. All right, so those are the only two. Again, I don't know how this cracked like that. That's pretty crazy, so I don't know. But um, yeah, anyways, uh, let's see here. So the RAM on this board is actually right here. So you can actually replace the RAM on this one. Um, it's not too difficult. You can actually leave the board in. You don't have to completely take it apart. So what I do for this one is um, I get some boxes, okay, just to be about the same height as the thing, and then I just let this go down. And I am going to have to clean out the dust, but here's the hard drive. And yeah, so I'm going to see what my customer wants me to do about the cracked glass thing. Um, I'm either going to have to like discount or charge them very little or I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do or buy a new screen for them and then do something with the the cracked one but anyways um, let's see 
I'll show you the hard drive part. So this is very similar to all the other like newer iMacs. There's this adhesive. You want to just get the adhesive out. Okay. So just like this, you just kind of scrape it up. And then once you do that, you can peel the adhesive back. Okay. And I am going to have to clean out all this dust as well. Okay. Jeez, this computer repair is going to end up costing me. So I don't know if somebody changed this before because I've never had that where the adhesive was like that. I mean, it does seem like the regular adhesive, but I don't know why the glass cracked so easily. So I don't know if it was changed for like a not as good, um, not as good glass or something. If you're wondering why my fingernails like orange, I was like cooking stuff with turmeric and it stained underneath my nails. So. I know a lot of people are going to complain and go, ew, that's gross, but whatever. It is what it is, all right? Okay, so let's peel this off. All right, and you just got to peel all of this adhesive off, okay? Um, because we are going to replace it with a new adhesive. But I'm going to have to see what my customer wants to do as well, because they might want me to get them a new screen or something okay that really sucks I hope that screens not too expensive oh somebody did work on this before okay because the whole bottom strip of adhesive it just came out that means whoever worked on this they never did that this be or they took the screen out before because normally that adhesive stays attached. It doesn't just come out like that. So definitely someone worked on this before. Okay, so if you're working on this, you want to be careful because, yeah, if somebody worked on it before, things like this could happen. Okay. All right, then we're going to scrape this part of the adhesive off as well. Sorry, I know it's getting bad focus, but... I mean, you get the idea. Yeah, I think somebody definitely worked on this before. Shoot, I should have taken it extra gentle. Okay. So I'm going to have to see what the customer wants to do. Um, because he might want to actually replace the RAM as well. But uh, we'll see. Alright, let's peel this up. Just like this. And I'm going to use like a powerful air blower to blow out all the dust. But basically, the dust gets used this. It sucks in the air and it blows it out here. So I'm going to actually go from the back, blow the dust out, and also blow with there with my powerful air blower. And blow all the dust out of here. Okay. So let's peel this. Probably should have looked closer. Sometimes there could also be like a nick in the glass. And then that small nick when you go to remove um, or to pry the glass or cut the adhesive out is enough to cause it to fracture very easily. So I'm going to get a close look. Maybe there's like a little crack in the edge. So it's not 100% my fault, but still... The customer will usually will say it wasn't like that before, so it's mostly going to be on me. So I'm going to have to see about getting them a replacement screen. Okay, so this one, the adhesive kind of broke. This sucks. So now I'm going to be out probably. I think this these screens are like 500 bucks or something. So this repair is going to end up, instead of making me money, it's going to cost me like four hundred or something dollars oh man not what I was looking forward to especially with taxes coming up all right let's peel this off okay and I'm gonna have to find a way to record this because I have to show how to put the new adhesives on and since they actually also somebody previously cut the adhesive it looks like then we're also going to have two um, 
peel this bottom adhesive out. Usually I never peel that bottom adhesive out and I just let it fold forward like this, like how I have it. And then I just push the thing back up. But since someone cut this before, then I have to do that. All right, peel up all this adhesive. Someone definitely worked on this before. Okay. So now we're gonna also, let's see. Oh yeah, let's remove this adhesive as well here. Okay. Let's see, I never remove this adhesive. So this is really weird. Someone definitely did this before. This one and normally there's a little pull tab to get these adhesives but this one whoever worked on it I don't know it's all cut off so I don't know this bottom part doesn't seem to want to peel up let me see if I can get it out this is really weird this the adhesive they have down here is like super thin for some reason Okay, this, this isn't coming out, so I'm probably going to have to leave it. <clears throat> I'm going to try with my plastic razor blade and see if I can get this out somehow, but... Okay, maybe is... Okay, it is coming up. Okay. Can I peel it off, or is it going to be stuck on there? Okay, it is peeling off. There we go. leaving behind residue that's kind of weird all right so we got all the adhesive out yep someone definitely worked on this before all right so now i'm gonna have to get the screwdriver and take these all out all right i'll be back all right so i'm back so i'm gonna show how to replace the hard drive now so if you're gonna do this you either want to clone your hard drive or you can use time machine backup uh, that's probably the easiest way or you want to actually clone your hard drive to um, or not clone your hard drive but uh, you can pull your hard drive out and then use an external adapter to do when you do a clean install um, the clean install you can use the built-in recovery uh, by holding command option um, actually I think it's command option R and that does like an internet based recovery um, so that's one way you can do it and then after it will ask you if you have like data from another drive and you can plug in your old hard drive with an external adapter but uh oops did I forget the oh here we go okay I got my screwdrivers so I believe if I remember correctly these are T10 screws okay so we're just going to remove these um, you actually also want to remove the speaker screws because this will make it easier to access so we'll remove these screws okay so let's see if I can do this with one hand. Set them aside. Keep the screws in order because they are different size, shapes, and lengths. You don't want to get them mixed up. All right. Usually the bottom screw will kind of stay in there, which is okay because we just need to be able to remove the screws so that we can pull this forward and then slide it over to the side a little bit. Okay. All right. So now we're going to continue with the hard drive. So just remove all these four screws holding these brackets in place. Again, keep the screws in order because they are different size, shapes, and lengths. Okay, sorry if my hand's going to get in the way, but I got to reach and get it easier. You want to be careful with this little cable that's right below this screw. Um, that's for the power button, I believe. So if you have that cable get disconnected, then the power button won't work. All right, so we're going to remove those. I am very likely going to have to, um, well, stitch the video together because I need to send my customer the thing with the broken glass, but uh, and then ask them what they want to do. Um, but yeah, all right. Let's remove. Sorry, my hand's blocking the whole camera, but you get the idea. Remove those four screws. Okay. 
All right, once you get those screws out, these plastic things will come out pretty easily. Okay. All right. And then you got these rubber brackets over the hard drive. So basically, you got this other hard drive. We're just going to transfer this all over. Um, and you do want to disconnect these cables here. So pull it up from the back here. All right. Slide it over slightly to the right. You got the cables here. It looks like they actually use two separate cables on this model. But I just use my fingernail in here and I kind of try and pull these cables out just like this. Okay, just like that. Once you get that one out, the bigger one, <clears throat> the smaller one's a little bit easier. You can kind of grab it and kind of pull it. If it doesn't work, then you're just going to have to keep trying with fingernail or some kind of pry tool. But you want to be careful because you don't want to break the connector off of the hard drive. Okay, it helps to kind of wiggle it like that. And there we go. So we got the hard drive here. All right, just like that. We're going to transfer this rubber thing over to the new drive. So just peel it off. It has like an adhesive, okay. Just peel it up like that and then um, pull this out. It slides off like that. Same thing, peel this one out and keep track of which way you have it. So I'm just going to keep holding that. And then we'll get the replacement drive and we'll just stick it back in the same way, okay. And just slide that sleeve on, okay. And we'll slide this part on, all right. Sorry, it's, I don't know if it, you guys can see, but it's hard to adjust the camera and everything while I'm doing this, so just get that on like that. All right, all the data is still on here, so you want to keep that, all right? And then we're just going to reattach these connectors. Let me see how I can do this, because my whole camera setup is in the way right now. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing, but you just line up the connector, and then push it on. I, I have a very bad like lighting right now, so let me see if moving it here will help. Okay, that kind of helps. And then get it lined up. This cable is much longer, so it's actually easier to put. If you want, you can put the larger one first. Okay, so hopefully you can see, just like that. And then the shorter one, you kind of have to work your way. You might have to move this a little more, the speaker to get some more room. It's a little bit difficult because my shadow keeps blocking it, but uh, okay, get it lined up. There we go, push that on, and there we go. And then just get the rubber pieces back in their slot. Just like that, okay. Let's zoom out so you can see everything, hopefully. There we go, all right. And then now you can move the speaker back into place. Make sure it's lined up. The way you can tell it's lined up is by checking this hole and make sure the screw hole lines up there. And you can actually put that screw first. Okay, once you make sure it's lined up. Tighten that, oops, tighten that down. I like to, let's see, it's always good to kind of twist it backwards first and hear it click into place and then you can tighten it. I don't know why it's being weird. Okay, let me double check it again. Let's take this out. Okay, make sure it's lined up and then get the screw in. Twist it backwards. There we go. Here, click in place and then tighten it down. Then this one will usually line up nicely already. And then just twist it backwards, tighten it down. There we go. And then we get those plastic brackets and put them back on. And put, make sure it goes underneath that cable again. All right. Get the screw. And usually I'll put it loosely first, just to make sure everything gets lined up. Get that screw in, make sure the cable is out of the way. Go. Once you get both in, you can tighten it all the way. Okay. All right, and then we'll get this up here. Tighten 
this one down. Put the other one in there. Alright, and that's how you install the SSD. All that's left is put to put back the adhesive. I am gonna let's see if I can show how to do the RAM install. So let's see if I can show that somehow. I'm gonna zoom out. Okay. So let's see if I can show how to do this the easy way. Um, we're gonna remove all the screws that are around here. The RAM is right on the edge here, so it's actually um, accessible. Um, we are going to just remove these screws. So there's one screw up here. Okay. And if your hand, your fingers are small enough, then we'll be able to do this without removing everything. So we're going to remove the two screws down here as well. Yeah, and keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shapes, and lengths. Okay. Remove the one screw down here as well making shadows so I don't know hopefully you guys can see and there's one more screw up in the top corner so make sure to remove all four there's one up here okay there we go. okay we might have to disconnect some cables but let's see all right so now that we got all four screws removed we should be able to pull this forward let's see it's caught on something am i missing a screw somewhere i feel like it's caught somewhere let's get closer up here so we got that screw that screw if you want you can disconnect this cable down here though we shouldn't need to but i'm going to just pop it out just like that okay I don't know if there's a hidden screw I'm missing somewhere because I don't see one, but it definitely feels like it's stuck. Oh, okay. Never mind. This this design, it's very complex, so I don't want to take it apart. So the heat sink here and all of this is attached on the other side, so I don't really want to mess with that and then risk damaging something. So I'm going to leave it like that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the RAM is actually right there on this side of the board. So you can actually pull this latch and then release the RAM. Um, and it's technically possible to do it without removing everything, but it'll be kind of a pain, um, mainly because of this. I'm going to see if removing these two screws will... Actually, let me try removing the fan and stuff and we'll see. But it is going to be a somewhat difficult thing. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna try remove these. So we'll remove the fan screws. I'm hoping I won't have to completely take it apart. Um, this is a customer's computer and usually I don't wanna like do stuff that's too risky. Like I don't even know why the glass exploded. That's kind of weird. So I don't know if there was a chip on it. And then that chip just made it really easy to crack because usually the glass doesn't break that easily. I barely applied force cutting through. Okay, so we'll remove these screws and now the fan can come out. As you can see, if you want to disconnect the fan, let me zoom in here. So the fan connector's right here. You just grab the wings of the connector and you kind of just wiggle it as you kind of pull and it pops out just like that. Then we can take the whole fan out just like that. Okay, so let's zoom out. So I should be able to remove the rest just by taking out these two screws. So let's see, are these smaller screws? These might be smaller, yeah. I think those are T8s, so let's get a T8 screwdriver bit. So let's get a T8 screwdriver. It might be actually a T9, but the T8 is working. And this screw, okay, you wanna be careful. You might wanna do this after you remove this bracket. It'll be easier to get to that screw. All right, and then we're gonna remove the other screw that's right here as well. Very careful removing those screws. All right, let's see if it moves now. Nope. 
So, something else is still holding it. I don't know if there's more screws hidden down there. Okay, yeah, so there's actually four screws. So, there's some screws hidden down there as well. So, let's actually remove this cable here. Okay, and we're gonna remove that screw. We're gonna remove the hard drive bracket again, and then we're gonna remove the two screws under there. So let's switch back to the T10. Okay, I'm getting a bunch of calls right now, so this repair is gonna be costing me some money if I don't answer. All right, let's see here. I might have to just do this in multiple parts and snip it all together. All right, take that plastic piece off. Switch back to the T8, and let's see if I can see the screws down here. So, it's underneath the rubber piece of the hard drive. Wait, it's underneath there. Oh, man. Okay, no. I don't want to take that out. That's too many steps. So, you'd actually have to take this whole um, hard drive bezel piece out. And, yeah, I'm not going to go through all of that. It looks like it's too much extra work. So, I'm going to... Put that back together all right sorry about that um maybe i should i don't know if i should edit this out or i'll leave it in there so you guys can kind of see what what we'll have to go into um doing this if anyone decides to try doing the ram just know it's going to be um, a lot of extra stuff that you need to remove so if you want to attempt it you can um, you can record it make a video but uh I don't want to risk doing that on this customer's computer, so I'm going to leave that as is, and we're just going to put back all these screws. Sorry about that. Kind of wasted your guys' time, or hopefully it'll help some people decide that it's not worth the extra effort, and then they won't buy the RAM, because sometimes um, people will buy the parts in advance before they see how difficult it is to do. And then they end up like stuck with the parts. So hopefully this will kind of at least show you what's involved. All right. All right. So I'm going to put that back for now. And we're going to put back all the motherboard screws now. Zoom back out. Okay. Let's put these back, I guess. And I don't know why Apple makes it as difficult as possible. Uh, they really don't want people working on this stuff. If I was going to be paid like way more to do the RAM, then I'd do it. But it's a lot of extra effort. So, And it's also risky, so I don't want to mess with too much here. Alright, so make sure that you plug back in that cable down there. Okay, if you took that out. Let's see, get that lined up, and, oops, sorry, where am I filming? Get that lined up, and then just push it back down, and get this cable, get that cable lined up. It's hard to do that with one hand, so I'm going to move that, let's put that, hopefully you can see. Get this lined up, just like that, okay. So, as far as the adhesive goes, I'll put the adhesive so you can kind of see on the outside. Alright, so the adhesive is the way you want to do this. Okay, let's remove them from the bag. I'm going to make sure, let's put the fan back real quick before I forget. Okay, oh, there's actually, there's actually a lot of dust caught in the fan here, so good thing I took that out. I'm going to clean it up. Okay, so just get in there, kind of get this dust out. Oops, sorry, I'm doing this out of camera. There we go. I'm just going to vacuum that later because it's pretty gross. Okay, so I'll get the fan. Line that back 
up. Let's put back these screws first. Put back these two screws. Oops, sorry. So I put back this one screw already. And I'm going to put this one. So it's good to put these two screws first to make sure everything is lined up. And then you can go ahead and do the last, the other one that's like hidden behind the cable last. Okay, just like that. And then we'll get this screw and tighten that one down. All right, and then we'll just reconnect this cable, same thing. Just line it up and then pinch the two together. Just like this, all right. Okay, so the adhesive, you got all these little strips. So what you wanna do is find which one lines up. So let's zoom out here so you can see the whole thing. Whoa, too far. This camera's like wide angle view is kinda crazy. But uh, okay, so you want to find this where it lines up. You want the flat end at the bottom and then the rounded one at the top. And then what you do is you peel off um, the backing of one side, but you leave the other. So we'll line this up. Okay. I might have to, let's see how I can do this because the camera's in my way trying to record. All right, so get that lined up like this. And like that. And then make sure to line up the edges here. And there we go. Then you can kind of push this down. And then once you get half of it on like that, you can go ahead, lift it up, and peel off the other one. And then just make sure to line up the edges. And there you go. Tape it down. So I'll leave the white part of the adhesive on like this. And then when we when we're ready with the screen, you peel that off and stick it back. Um, so right now we're just gonna leave that. We're gonna check this one. Wait, uh oh, this set is not. Oh, I just didn't line it up right. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I like to line up the the wireless antenna part here. Okay, and that's usually the easiest way to make sure it's all lined up, but. This one looks like it goes slightly over too far. So it might actually end up overlapping. Okay, there we go. I'll put it like that. Peel off this one so I can start it, stick it down. Line up the edge. And we'll peel off this one. You want to be careful not to stretch the adhesive because um, at the gap of this part it will easily stretch so just be careful with that all right line up the adhesive okay and go to the other side line up this one as well okay Hopefully you guys can see and I'm not blocking anything. Okay. That's the second one. Oh. There we go. Get the other side. There we go. All right, and now we do the bottom ones. So the bottom ones, as I was saying, usually have these peel up tabs and they go like this. So here you can see, you'll wanna kind of test fit it first, okay? So 
So you see they meet at the middle here. This one's a little too much. Okay. So you can see it lines up like that. So basically that little dot in the middle is the center and you want to line them up like that. Okay. So we're going to peel that off. And then we're going to line up this piece with the center dot there. Alright, and then just pull it out just like that and stick that all on. There we go. And then we'll do the same with the other side. go all right and there we go and then when you start make sure you get everything lined up I'll usually do the bottom first so let me see if I can show this so usually I will you can line it up and then while you have it lined up I like get my finger along the edge here to make sure that it's flush if you want you can um, get this whole thing lined up like this first okay and then what you do is you get a piece of tape and you just um, put it over this. Don't wrap it around, just put it on here so that way it acts as like a hinge to like open and close like this. So I'm actually going to get a piece of tape right now and I'll do that. I'll be back. Okay, so just get some tape like this. just tape it in three spots so I'm gonna cut like three pieces of tape okay it's definitely stuck it to itself but okay so get three pieces again make sure that these edges are lined up so you kind of just with your fingers push it to the edges make sure to keep the screen tilted back so it doesn't fall forward okay and then you'll tape this in place I'm not going to actually do the adhesives now because I need to ask the customer what they think about that that small crack there. Um, but yeah, all right, so we got that. And then once you got this taped in place, then you can actually lean the screen forward like this. Make sure to kind of hold it up so it doesn't just completely fall down. And then, um, oh, there you go but that keeps it aligned and then you can actually peel the bottom one off first and do that first but yeah the tape isn't going to hold too strong so you kind of want to hang on to that all right so now i'm going to show inside how to reconnect the cables um, and the rest you'll be able to just uh, peel the adhesive off okay so let me show this real quick because i have to answer a bunch of calls all right so if you once you do the adhesive on the bottom not this but the inside ones you can actually lean the screen forward like this and I'm gonna try and do this one-handed but you'll get this cable in first okay line it up and then just make sure to push it in once you get it pushed in you can kind of use this metal latch to help you pull it let's see if I can show this I just switch fingers, but you can use that metal latch to help pull it. And then once you do that, just push that metal latch down. All right. It'll be seated in place. And then you get this cable here. And basically, oops, same idea. Just line it up. Push that in place. Okay. Oops, sorry. And then I use my fingernail or you can use whatever to kind of just push that in place and make sure it latches in All right and then if you try and pull it it should stay in place there we go so now we know it's good all right then after you're done what I like to do is I don't do the adhesive yet but I put tape over the top here and around the sides just wrap it around to keep the screen in place start it up make sure everything works once you confirm everything works you can take that tape off 
open the screen back up and then you can peel these off and reseat the screen. Make sure to press all around firmly and then wrap the tape over and leave that for at least 24 hours to get a good um, solid stick. But that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. Thank you for watching. Um, if it helped, like, subscribe, help others find my videos. And I'll see you in the next one. But here's that crack that I was talking about. Alright, see you guys later. Bye.